Hey guys, Dan here, and we've got Tim over Zoom. Hey, Tim. Hi, everybody. It is uh, once again for Dan, time once again, I should say, for Dan Does Disney. And uh, we've got a pretty obscure one, another one that is not on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I do believe, did you look this up, Tim? I do believe you could probably rent this like some of the others from Amazon or something. I did not look, but I imagine you could. Okay, I imagine you can too. But I have, this is the most bizarre uh one yet i think in terms of uh, packaging so i've got this weird tin that this comes in from the disney movie club it's the only way apparently that you can get it it never came out on a regular dvd it's probably on a regular vhs but it's like you open it up and you've got like a little mini poster in here and a certificate of authenticity that this is a real deal big red package uh, and then the, the DVD itself comes in like this flyer thing. Um, so I don't quite understand why or what is happening. As far as I could tell, it's like the only one that's like this on the Disney Movie Club. I don't know. Maybe they, they did some type of like anniversary like promo or something. Yeah. Like, and that was the, the only time they released it. And they're like, OK, well, this is what we have. <laughs> Yeah, it's possible. I mean, tw this is, we're in 62, so I guess 2012 would have been the 50th anniversary. So maybe something with that. I don't know. But in any case, it's very odd. And it's going to look really stupid on my shelf, but uh, but we, we have it anyway. Um, and so uh, let's talk a little bit about this movie here. I have some of the background stuff. Um, pretty scarce, really, on uh, online with information about, about this movie. Yeah. Um, but because there's a little booklet in here, and I did find one website that had some uh, interesting information, uh, so I know a little bit about it. So it is based on um, a 1945 novel. Tim will talk a little bit more about that. But there was also two other novels in the series, um, one called Irish Red and Outlaw Red was the other one. They were both about Red's sons, um, which we, we meet towards the end of the film um they were never made into anything as far as i know they just kind of existed um so this movie was mostly filmed in quebec a little bit in uh, big bear lake in california um and it was directed by norman tokar uh this is his first disney film tim of course has all the info usually um so he'll tell us all of the movies that uh, norman's going to direct he's going to do 15 of our upcoming disney movies um but I recognize this name because I'm a huge fan of Leave it to Beaver, and he directed over 100 episodes of Leave it to Beaver. So as soon as I saw his name in the credits, I was like, I know that guy. Why do I know that guy? Um, but this was his first ever feature film. He did 16 films total, and 15 of them were Disney. Yep. The only one he didn't do was Where the Red Fern Grows, um, which I remember hearing about the book, I guess. I didn't know there was a movie, but um, all right. So this was shown in uh, 1964 on television uh, as part of the wonderful world of color opposite the premiere of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, and I, I believe it beat both of them uh, in the ratings that night. So people must have loved it. Um, the script was written with the lead actor, Walter Pigeon, in mind. Uh, he was doing Broadway at the time for many years. He had sort of gotten out of films, and Walt convinced him to come back and do some movies. Um, and so this is the one that brought him back. Uh, for the dog, uh, to find the, the actor, so to speak, to play the dog, um, Disney got with his old buddy, Bill Kohler, who trained uh, Old Yeller, who trained the dog in The Shaggy Dog. Um, and so they, they found this dog together. Um, and then in terms of the music, the, uh, the Sherman brothers, our good friends uh, that have been coming up lately, wrote a few French Canadian type sounding songs for this. Um, and Disney had hired this famous harmonica player at the time, and it took him months to learn all of these harmonica uh, tunes. And then the boy in the, in the movie, Giles Payant, uh, just heard it one time, picked up his own harmonica and, and played along. And Disney was so impressed that the music you actually hear in the movie is uh, a recording of the kid actually doing the harmonica parts himself. Um, and the only other thing I really know about this is uh, that producer Winston Hibbler, who uh, you might recognize that name from a bunch of the True Life Adventures, he sort of scoped out uh, all of the, the Canadian 
whatever uh, stuff that we see in the background and uh, all the, the beautiful, um, you know, landscapes that we see. He sort of is instrumental in trying to find those. Um, so we, we have that. Um, the only other things I know is uh, that this kid never did another movie again. This is his one and only film. Uh, he didn't die till 2012. So uh, no one is quite sure what he was up to after he got out of acting. Um, and then I read that there may be a, a Disney Plus series in the works for this movie, which makes no sense because this is not on Disney Plus. But uh, an article in S September, so just a few months ago, said that there that there may be a big red TV show in the works. Oh, yeah, very odd, very odd. Yeah. Um, so that that's what I have about the background of uh, the movie. Um, we've seen a couple of these people in other projects, uh, and, and Tim, you can tell us all about, well, I should say, I guess I didn't say this, uh, this is from June 6th of 1962. So we're right in the middle of, uh, the year here, big summer release. Um, so let's hear about the movie. Let's hear about some of the actors. Yeah. Uh, so it's 62, like you said, uh, it is the, the 60th anniversary coming up. Um, and we're halfway through. Oh, yeah. 62. There's six movies that come out in 62, and this is the third one um, for Disney. Um, like you said, um, it's based off the 1945 novel by, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's Jim I wasn't going to try it, Tim. Kill Killigard or something like that. Um, sure. And he, he wrote a lot of novels, like you said. Uh, he has two sequels to this, and then a lot of other ones. That are, it sounds like it's a lot of uh, animal adventure type books. I looked at the, the list. Um, but the Big Red, uh, we have a wealthy sportsman spends $5,000, which would be equivalent to about $39,000 in today's Ooh, money. You did the inflation calculator. I found uh, it was written somewhere in trivia, I think. Um, but he spends the $5,000 on an Irish, uh, Irish setter show dog named Big Red. However... His strict ways of training the dog rubs young Rene the wrong way. Rene is a 10-year-old orphan boy hired to help take care of Big Red, and the two of them form an unbreakable bond of friendship. This bond leads to unexpected consequences, um, but could also warm the cold heart of the strict sportsman. And that is the story of Big Red. So like Dan said, the cast, you have Walter uh, Pigeon. Um, he plays James Hagen, who is the sportsman. Um, he's famous for Forbidden Planet, Funny Girl. He was nominated for two Oscars um, once in, uh, actually back-to-back -back years, 43 and 44. 43 was Mrs. Uh, Menevere, and then 44 was Madame Curie um madam and, curie oh my woman i did a paper on her in uh grade school and mrs miniver uh i've heard of i think that may have won best picture that year um yeah. but uh it was nominated for a uh, lead actor as well so um um so this is his first disney thing that he's done and we'll we'll have him once more in 69 he does a voice role in the movie rascal um, which I believe is also directed by um, uh, Norman Tokar. Yeah. Um, so then we have, um, like you said, uh, Giles Payant. Um, he plays young Rene Dumont. Um, it's an introducing credit and it's his only credit. So uh, like you said, he didn't do any other acting roles, no TV, no nothing. This is his only thing on IMDb. Um, and then we have uh, Emile uh, Genest. Um, he plays Emile Fournette. Um, and he is uh, like the dog trainer, caretaker type person. Uh, he, he takes a liking to Rene um, and uh, lets him, I think, live with him um, and his wife. Uh, and uh, we'll see him one more time in, in the incredible journey. Um, which is the the Homeward Bound movies that, uh, but the first one, the first one's called Incredible Journey, and then the remake, which was in the nineties, is called Homeward. Uh, 
those are the ones I know. I wasn't sure about the original. Yeah, so there's a original. Um, I didn't write down what year it was. And we but... saw this guy, that guy before though too. And uh, Nikki, wasn't he in Nikki Wild Dog of the North? I didn't see that on his. So, I feel like somebody. I think it was him. Somebody from this movie oh. was was like the villain in Nikki Wild Dog of the North. I think it was him. Huh. I, I maybe I just didn't scroll down far enough. Um, and uh, if he was the villain, then that's that was a great turn quite quite the change i would say um and then uh his wife is played by jeanette bertrand um she plays uh teresa fournette um she's like the cook and the the housekeeper for uh the sportsman um and uh she has some other acting roles but it's all french names so i imagine it's french canadian television and movies and stuff like that um but I think uh, I think the acting here was really top notch for almost everybody. Um, the even the, from the kid, I think it was like when I first started hearing talk French, I thought I was like, "What is going on?" And then I thought he did a good. I don't know if it's his acting or the character. I thought he did a good job of a young boy who doesn't know English. And is trying to learn English and then goes into French and English. I thought that was good. Um, I mean, I would take this over some of uh, Bobby Driscoll. Littlest Outlaw. What? Littlest Outlaw. Littlest Outlaw, Bobby Driscoll's later performances. Um, yeah, he's like, stunk. So as a child actor, I think he's better than, uh, than young... Um, Kevin uh, Corcoran? Kevin Corcoran, like... When Kevin Corcoran was in uh, Old Yeller, I think this is better than that. I mean, yeah, he was definitely annoying in Old Yeller. I, I guess this kid's not quite as annoying, but I, I do think I don't know. He, he for me was the weaker link in terms of the acting because I felt like the adults were all like really on point. Yes, and I, I just think that at, for a child actor, I think we could do a lot worse. I mean, he, he's no Tommy Kirk. But yeah, Tommy you're right. Kirk, when we saw Tommy Kirk, he was at least probably three or four years older than this, right? Yeah, I think I think this kid's age is yeah, it's probably maybe a year or two older than the first time we saw Kevin Corcoran or the kid from Littlest Outlaw, probably two or three years older than him. Okay. Yeah, I I will say that one of Bobby Driscoll's earliest roles, where it was so dear to my heart, I think that was better than this. But then. Driscoll didn't do well after that um but I think it was it was decent enough um and I think the the dogs did great as well um how about when he started speaking French at the beginning of the movie and there were no subtitles I was so confused I I I did think it was weird but I do think it kind of works because it kind of takes the audience a little bit out of it and kind of puts us in his shoes kind of what like spielberg did with west side story the new one where they have conversations without subtitles and you don't really feel lost but you kind of get the gist of it and when you needed it to be translated the meal character translated for you so i think it worked yeah no i i it definitely didn't like i didn't dislike it once i realized what was going on but because of this weirdo tin i was like is this did i get like the french version of this movie or something like i didn't know what was going on and then finally uh walter pigeon like started to talk english and i was like oh okay good like this this is how it's supposed to be but yeah it definitely threw me off a of version i wonder how audiences in the the 60s sort of felt about that I they probably didn't like it. Um, yeah, I can imagine. And I I don't I think I might have had different views on it if it wasn't for Spielberg's West Side Story where he didn't use subtitles. And then I read about that and I kind of like got the idea of what he was doing. And I was like, okay, that makes a lot se- makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, because these characters wouldn't necessarily be able to understand this kid, just like he can't really understand them. Yeah, at first, yeah. So, I agree. Um, so uh, uh like you said director um he directed many early episodes of believe in beaver and like you said he'll direct 16 movies in his career and uh 15 of them are disney the one oddball is set the 1974 where the red fern grows which i believe i 
watched in school um because i remember our teacher read the book to us um and then we watched it um, okay yeah but, i couldn't remember i i feel like we definitely read the book i i can't remember if that was one of the ones they also showed us the movie of. i i don't think it was though but yeah obviously when i saw the name i i recognized it but yeah i think i never saw the movie but this guy does a lot of animal movies. Redfern Groves is dogs. You, Rascal, which, which we mentioned, is a raccoon. Um, I think he did Incredible Journey, which is two dogs and a cat. His next next time we see him is um, 63 for The Savage Sam, which is the old Geller sequel. Um, so I think he does some stuff that isn't with do- uh, animals. I think he does um, Follow Them Boys with uh, Fred McMurray. Um, his most famous Disney movie, though, is The Apple Dumpling Gang in 75. And now that's one of my favorite of uh, the old ones, Tim. I've never seen it. I've heard of it many times. Yeah. Well, I remember when we first played uh, Disney Seen It at your house. Yes, that was have- one of the answers. And I was the only person in the whole room that ever even knew- heard of it, knew what it was. And everybody was like, what are you talking about, Apple Dumpling Gang? But it is a pretty famous one. Yeah, and I think that's probably the only reason I know it, though. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the, I, I don't know how they did it, but I imagine they did not have this dog fighting an actual mountain lion. I but, couldn't find anything about that, but it looks pretty real, so I don't know. I mean, maybe it's a trained mountain lion and they it was just really done well. But I mean, I imagine if you put this mountain lion against this dog, the mountain lion would win like hands down in two seconds. Right. But uh, I thought I, I, I don't see them actually just putting a mountain lion with a, a dog though. I know they, 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 they pushed lemons off a cliff. They, they had like... Um, a zebra stuck in some mud and like some other stuff like they they had shady practices in this time period um i just don't know how they did it honestly well listen listen in the new jackass movie they put an actual like bear i think it's i don't know what kind of bear it is black bear maybe uh in a room with this guy with meat on his crotch and the bear like doesn't kill him so i i guess if you train an animal enough I I guess it knows how to not react. I agree, though. I I, I was pretty shocked by uh, that scene because it looked very very real. I I don't obviously it was before CGI, so I, I don't know. It seems to me it was probably real. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I, I, I imagine it was trained because I mean we, they did do Nicky Wild Dog in the North where they just had dog fighting. It was it was really graphic, but. They also had Nikki with a trained bear at one point, just walking around with a bear tied to him. <laughs> right. So they they do put trained animals as well, so I imagine it was somewhat trained. Um, oh, I'm so. sure it was very trained. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's yeah, it's kind of wild to see now since they would never really do anything like that, you know, in in this day and age. But a lot easier to watch than Nikki Dog of the North, though, in terms oh. of the the animal violence. I, they because it, it didn't really focus on like on it that much i think that they they kept cutting and certain things so like maybe they had camera tricks and that they they also had a, a stuffed dead lion at the end too so yeah um, that's true so i don't know uh but the the dogs were cute the puppies were even cuter um and uh i don't know i i enjoyed this movie um as far as dog movies go, um, I might have enjoyed Greyfriars Bobby a little bit more, or probably just not the same. But I mean, it, this is a lot better than Nikki Wild Dog of North. Yeah, I, it's definitely better than Nikki Dog of the North. It's better than some we've seen. Uh, my biggest issue with the movie um, is that it just, I felt it was kind of bland. Like it was fine. But I feel like in every one of the dog movies we've seen before, the the stakes were very high. You know, Old Yeller, we obviously know what happens there. 
Um, this just seemed, I mean, it was pleasant to watch. It was fine. You know, there was a little peril, but in terms of some of the other ones we've seen, this one just seemed very sort of safe. And, uh, you know, I don't know if maybe there was backlash after Nick, because Nikki in the North was just like a year before this, right? Yeah. And maybe, so I, maybe they wanted, a, like, Old Yeller is a great movie, but it is very depressing. Um, it's a downer, for sure. And I, I mean, did you think this might go in Old Yeller territory? Um, like, I, yeah, yeah. No, well, I, okay. Here's why I didn't, though. Um, because the big thing about like where they're like nailing the dog down comes in like the middle of the movie. So I was like, well, they, they're not going to put him down now because there's still 45 minutes left. Well, I didn't think about that. I thought maybe Big Red doesn't make it type of thing. Like, oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Not, not um, some fine fight. I didn't, ugh, I guess I should be a little bit more cynical because of what we've seen Disney do. No, I really didn't. I, I, I felt like he was going to make it the whole time. Oh, I, I really thought he wasn't going to make it the Mount Lion fight. And then, um, he was just going to be given one of the, the small dogs, his new little red that he, he named. And I was like, okay, that would have been one way to go. You know, actually now that we're talking about, I, I'm surprised Disney didn't go that route. Yeah. I, it was surprising for me. Hmm. Yeah. I, I sort of, I, old yeller was so like scarring. I sort of forget like how this was only what four years or something after that. So that was still definitely in the, in the wheelhouse. Um, yeah, I, I thought momentarily that they were maybe going to put him down in the middle of the movie, and then I realized there was, you know, we're only halfway in, so they obviously weren't going to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. That was also one of my least favorite scenes with the the kid and his acting. I don't think he was I, the, the the screaming and the uh, the whining because they were going to put his dog down. I thought that was a little over the top. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think the movie is bad. I just think it didn't do anything that we hadn't necessarily seen maybe better in Old Yeller, Greyfires, Bobbies, some, some of the more, you know, um, pleasant viewing experiences that we've had with the dog movies so far. Yeah, I mean, I, was, I didn't, I, I kind of overshot and said that this was one of my favorite dog movies old yeller is definitely up here and then like gray fires bobby and i think this one right about here and then uh nicky wild Nick dog is horrible. yeah we've done more though isn't there more dog movies than that i know we did an elephant movie um uh, we've done an elephant we've done a sheep we've done a horse um i i mean that's right I guess uh, okay. So the shaggy dog. I mean, but oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, we did technically have a dog movie, but it was a person dog. And then we had animated 101 Dalmatians. Like okay, was, I, I I guess you're right. Maybe this is only the the third or fourth live action dog one we've had. Yeah, so dear to my heart was a was a horse. No, the sheep. sheep or something. The sheep. The sheep. Uh, and then uh, yeah, all right. Well, I, I definitely think it's a little less good than gray fires bobby but i do think it's like in that league but yeah old yeller obviously cream of the crop nikki wild dog of the north the the poop um so yeah i i put this somewhere in between but um you know it's a brisk 89 minutes after uh we've done a couple that were i think a bit long in the tooth yeah and i think this is it's good for the whole family like um yeah that's not, true doesn't it's not scarring it's not like it's not like taking your little kid to go see Bambi and having your your kid be scarred because Bambi moms died or um, or Old Yeller, which is very scarring for small children that Fee Buffet's mom doesn't let her watch the end of it. <laughs> right. Um, but. but yeah. All right. How about the Disney Plus show, Tim? Would you, would you, would you want to watch that? Um. I mean, seems like an odd choice to. I mean, they're plucking, you know, the Mighty Ducks and, and things people have heard of. It just seems so odd to even consider doing a movie that's not even on your your platform. Oh, they would they would have to then add it, like uh, yes. But 
I mean, with all the disclaimers that like, oh, this is back when animals, you know, were treated differently in movies and whatever. Sure, it's not a sequel or a series like uh, to like the big green and it's just the big red. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was Disney, right? We're going to watch what? big green eventually. Yeah. One of your favorites. <laughs> it's not one of my favorites. It's just <laughs> one of my favorites to mention. <laughs> uh the 90s disney that's gonna be some weird ones because you've got like the cream of the crop like lion king beauty and the beast and then you've got like meet the deedles and the big green and all these really stupid ones yeah uh but all right back back to a uh, good old big red yeah i, I don't know i i feel like maybe I'm a, I'm a little less than you want it just was a bit safe for me i do agree though uh i think disney had done a lot of maybe uh more adult things you know bon voyage was a bit sexed up and then nikki dog of the north was pretty brutal so i i will say for the family element this is definitely not a bad choice i can see why uh, it was such a success when they ran it on television yeah and uh so i i give it uh probably a b okay i'm, a, I'm just a little below you with the b minus oh yeah um but yeah de- definitely uh, Old Yeller is is the pinnacle. I'm interested to see Savage Sam how that sort of stacks up. Um, that is next year, right? You said sixty three. Yeah, that's in sixty three. It's uh, one of six movies in sixty three. I don't have the the exact order of the sixty three movies. Um, I think there's another dog movie this year, though, isn't there for sixty two? Uh, yes. Um, next we have uh, Almost Angels, which is the one movie that's on Disney Plus for sixty two. Nice. And then we have Legend of Lobo, which I believe is a dog. Okay. Um, I think you're right about that. And then we end the year with In Search of Castaways, which I believe is the Haley Mills uh, vehicle for the year. Oh, that's, yeah, we haven't seen her actually in a little bit now. She does one, she was doing one each year. Um, So, okay. um, So, uh, and then when do we get to, uh, savage sam so that's like in the middle of next year next year is all about the sequels because then you've got son of flubber oh yeah son, and son of- uh, savage sam and uh and then it ends with a nice christmas uh, animated sword in the stone yeah and which i've so, never seen um i've seen it um but it's been a really long time i don't know if i've seen all of it it's, it was one of the few um like we had the vhs like the bubble packaging VHS, yeah the clamshells spam shells and that was one of the few that we didn't have. Um, okay. Maybe it was in the vault or something. Um, yeah. But Yes, uh, you know, the Disney vault. Well, you got to get the, the, the collection of tins now, Tim. That's the new one. That's the new one. <laughs> get uh, all the, the tins you can get. If they just had a series of them, I would feel better. But it's just going to look so stupid on my shelf. But surprisingly, Son of Flubber and Savage Sam are not on um, Disney+. Plus. That, yeah, that is weird. I have, I got both of them on uh, two packs with the original movie, so luckily we we can swap those DVDs out. But that is weird. They wouldn't have Savage Sam, depending on how rough it is on the dog. I can see, but Son of Flubber seems like an odd one to uh, leave out. Yeah, because um, I assume, I assume they have the Robin Williams Flubber, right? Um, I, yes. When you type yeah. in Flubber, that's what comes up. Okay. Um, all right. Well, another, another fairly short one in the books, Tim. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, not, not much to say when there's not a lot of background on it. But yeah, so the next one, like you said, will be Almost Angels, uh, which is on Disney Plus. So we love that. Uh, and that is the one with it's like a choir or something, I think. I don't yeah, know. It looks, I just, it looks like a boys choir. Uh, I guess we'll find out about it. I don't recognize really any of these names. So could be uh, could be sort of a, an odd one to talk about. Yeah. But all right. Well, thanks, Tim, for joining as always. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Bye. Bye, everybody.